Welcome to our new series, Exposure, where we look at the photographers behind the lens and learn what it means to be a professional. Today, we're gonna to talk to David Mayu, a skyscape photographer. Well, let's get started. All right, here we have David Mayhew. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks uh, for having me. Before we get started, uh, why don't you tell us just a little bit about yourself? Yeah, uh, originally from England. Uh, my background is actually design, but I came over to the US uh, and got into storm chasing. I, I've always said every country you go to, you've got to do something unique to that country. Mm -hmm. So when I came here, I was interested in weather. And down, down the road from where I was working, there was a, a college that did meteorology program. So I got into storm chasing, and at the same time, digital photography came out. So I got into that, studied photography, combined the two hobbies. And okay, that's fantastic. And uh, so what, what inspired you to be a photographer? Uh, well, I've always been visual, which is why I went into the design, uh, the design career initially. Um, but this just happened to fall into place. I, I actually started taking stills with a video camera and editing them and drawing out the, the, the detail, the color, right. and that's... I thought that was pretty cool and went from there. Okay, so uh, so why landscape photography specifically? Just Oh, well, it's not landscape, it's skyscape. Skyscape? Yeah. So everything I shoot specializes in uh, the weather or is affected by the weather. So mainly looking at the skies, doing some night sky stuff as well as the storms. All right, and uh, and you said that you, you, uh, you were trained earlier, or rather you went to school for it. Right? Yeah, I, I went to a college uh, near Chicago. Um, did uh, three years studying photography there. So. Okay. And that's the same place where they had the meteorology program, so it kind of... Balanced yeah. out. Yeah. Okay, and so uh, what's the biggest source of inspiration for your work? Well, it's all to do with the sky. Um, it's about capturing that one decisive moment because the storms, uh, they're never repeated, never the same colors, the textures, and you get so many different emotional qualities from the storms. You get the drama of the storms, the tornadoes, you get the serenity of a sunset, the, the mystique of uh, a night sky, the starry skies. So there's plenty to shoot out there. I can keep shooting for a long time. Okay, and, wh and when you're shooting, what do you have a preferred camera? What's your favorite type to use? Uh, I'm currently using um, Canon 5D Mark III, so top of the range Canon. Uh, I've got a 1DS Mark III, so I'm waiting for something new to come out and then upgrade that one. So. Okay, excellent. And do you, do you use any editing tools? That yeah, I use Lightroom, um, just doing global editing, drawing out the contrast, the saturation, making the image pop. Yeah. Okay, and do you have any, do you have any specific things you do in there or something that's your own unique flavor when you're using those tools? Uh, not so much. It's more in the taking the, the shot and planning ahead. I mean, even for, for night shooting, you've got to plan where the stars are going to be relative to a subject matter, whether the moon's going to be up, if it's going to be too bright. So it's more to do with the shooting, the composition, than, than the post-editing. But once you get an image, sometimes I have to feel out the best way to treat that image. So, sometimes bringing out the colors more important. Sometimes it leans towards a black and white. So. Okay. And how would you describe your own photographic style? Uh, uh, sharp, dynamic, uh, inspirational, hopefully. <laughs> Um, and then also the finishing styles is very unique to me. Uh, I have a lot of different looks. The first thing I did when I did an art show for the first year is get rid of glass because you get glare um, when you have a show and it rains, the rainwater goes down the glass, it ruins the print, you get humidity in there. So the first thing was uh, I changed out and created kind of this frame plaque look where you've got a laminate finish over the top and no glass. Okay. So what do you consider a fantastic photograph? Um, that's a tough one to answer. Uh, it's all to do with the emotional response to the image, so anything that really strikes me or the, the viewers. I, I've had some pieces that I thought are great that never sell, and then there's some pieces that I really don't like that sell well, and it's, so it's a mixed bag. So. And, and when you are shooting, what techniques do you consider staple or almost required for the shoot? A tripod, because uh, when you're shooting storms and you've got a tornado heading at you and you're shaking and it's windy, yeah, that kind of helps get it nice and crisp. So, uh, yes. and especially for, for the longer exposures at night time. Um, but uh, other than that, composition is key because uh, I look for the sky first and then I try and find a nearby subject, maybe an old building, uh, something in the foreground that will add to the scene. So, okay. 
Yeah. Now, not just in your field, but photography in general, what does it take to be successful? Well, you've got to be both the artist and the business person. I mean, it, 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 just because you can make a pretty picture doesn't mean you can sell it. So right. uh, you've got to try and find the right market and something that people are going to enjoy as well. Okay. Now, regarding storm chasing, mm -hmm. what was your closest call and did you get a picture of it? <laughs> uh, closest call uh, was probably, well, I had my rear windshield blown out from a storm in 2007 near the Badlands of South Dakota, right. but it was the, the tail end of the storm. It's just outflow winds, not tornadic. So I was never in any danger, but uh, that blew out the rear windshield. And yes, I'm just trying to see if I have one here, but uh, I've got one called the Yellow Brick Road, which is from that storm, uh, which is still a top seller today. So. Fantastic. Uh, and now you say on your website that you want to interpret the sky's emotional quality through the lens. Can right. you speak a little bit more to that? Um, well, as you get different changing light at sunset, you get difference from cool colors to the warm colors. Uh, different textures and layers of clouds give different diffusion to light. So that splits it up and gives you beautiful sunset colors. Uh, then with the night skies, you've got the inspiration, the detail of the, the stars in the sky, the Milky Way. And now, uh, uh, further from that, the, how does the sky speak to you exactly, right? You interpret the emotional quality based on the, the hues or I guess the weather itself, but how does it speak to you and how do you transfer that to the viewer? Yeah, well, it's all about interpreting the moment that you're on. So, for example, um, chasing, a, if I'm trying to look for a tornado, if the storm's not looking very tornadic, but it has phenomenal structure, I'll go a long way away to get the detail of the structure with the sunlight hitting it, maybe at sunset at a lower angle and uh, yeah, just feeling out the storm. Okay, so how do you prepare for the storm chase? And how, how does the, I guess, the weight affect you when you're on your long roads with the clear skies? Yeah, uh, well, the first thing is have a vehicle that's ready to go. Uh, so I have, you've got to have a reliable vehicle that gets you there and gets you away. That's rule number one. <laughs> There's no point taking a photo that you, no one's ever going to see because you've just been wiped out by a tornado. So, um, so there's that. Uh, and then second to that, I've got a laptop set up that has mobile broadband, so I get live feed from radar, right. uh, so I can observe the storm. And once I've forecasted a target location, I'll get into a position where there's a good road network, so I can adjust to whatever's happening in that day, uh, pick a storm and go for it. So. Okay, and what, what would you say is the most difficult part of your job? Um, difficult part, well, uh, there's some, some chases uh, I'll drive over a thousand miles, so it's quite exhausting. If there's storms back to back, day from day, that's tiring because I'm mostly on my own. Uh, but then there's days that you drive <laughs> hundreds of miles and you see nothing but blue sky. There's a situation where the atmosphere is capped. When you have warm air aloft in the mid level, the storm initiation is uh, there's in inhibition. So if it doesn't pop, you get blue skies and you're sitting there wondering, what am I doing here? But if it goes, then it goes big time because there's a lot of uh, potential energy in there that suddenly right. bursts through and uh, so. Now, what is your favorite kind of weather? Um, depends, if I'm doing an art fair, I don't like severe weather at all because A, I can't shoot it and B, I can't sell anything. So there's no point in being there. But my favorite kind of weather is a supercell storm, which is a rotating storm that can produce tornadoes. And you get the rotation, the round structure, it's isolated, it's moving slowly. Uh, and preferably up in the Dakotas where there's no one else but you and a couple of cows in the storm. Perfect. And your favorite season, do you have one? Yeah, spring. Spring's the best time for storms. Um, uh, you can get storms in April, um, but May's the main season and into June. And I like the later seasons because it tends to be that the later the storm is in the season, it tends to be slower and more isolated. Uh, and it tends to be further north in remoter locations away from the crowds. So yeah, spring's a good season for it. All right, and, uh, and where can our viewers see more of your work? Uh, uh, can you tell us a little bit about your website so they can check it out? Yeah, my website is davidmayhewphotography.com. Uh, on there, I've got a storm chase log, so you can see each day, follow the sequence of the storms, how they develop. But if you want behind the scenes, all the, the juice of what's going on live, uh, follow me on Facebook and just look for David Mayhew Photography there. You'll get to see what, what trouble I get into over there as well. That's fantastic. It has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, that's all we have today. If you have any more photographers you'd like to see exposed, please let us know. I'm your host, Ben. Thank you for joining us.